Hey love, so I wanted to make a video about how it, it is that I study for my exams and what I do. So I'm going to show you guys everything that I do. This is going to be in a really um, relaxed mode because I'm actually in bed and I'm just going to shoot this video so you guys can see as I'm actually doing it. So first what I do is I read through my book and this is my textbook right here. And I am covering chapter 16 and this is on cancer. So I read through the book, well the chapter, and I highlight things that I think um, will be on the exam. I highlight things that I think I may possibly forget and then I highlight things that I would need for the future and also anything that is just, you know, important knowledge to know. Highlighting like um, the development of cancer, how is it promoted, I do pay attention to the figures. A lot of times I've noticed that um, our exam questions, one or two may actually come from a figure. So it's it's an easy way for you to um, get extra points. Like, you know, just look over the figures and try to remember just the gist of what it's saying. And that can definitely help you. That could be a difference between an A and a B. Um, more figures. Anything that I think is important. And then also what I always... Uh, pay attention to is nursing interventions. So for instance here this is talking about extravation and that happens when you put um, chemotherapy drugs into veins and it can be too hazardous or caustic to the veins and then you actually end up with something like this and um, pretty much it's like uh, what happens is, is that the drug is infiltrated into the tissues where it doesn't belong and then it actually causes the tissue to kind of break down. So then you want to make sure that you look out for the signs of it, which is swelling, redness, and vesicles on the skin. And then you also want to know how to treat it. And that would be, um, like for instance, it says patients may need surgical intervention um, varying from debridement to skin grafting. And you want to keep it free from um, any bacteria or anything like that so it doesn't become infected. So you guys see, I don't, I try not to highlight a whole lot, well this page, that was another story, but this page is because it started to follow the nursing implementations of bone marrow su um, suppression. So this is where I really go crazy, is wherever it's um, covering what I need to do, I make sure I really focus on that. So then after I read through the chapter and I highlight everything that I think is necessary, signs and symptoms and then um, what it is I can do to help the patient. What I do is next is I come to my laptop and with this book, The Med Surge uh, by Lewis, it comes with Evolve and Evolve has an actual like catalog where you can store all your books. So you guys can see that I have my Fundamentals of Nursing, my Med Surge book, um, a care plan book, a pharmacology book, and then this is the NCLEX RN um, Comprehensive Review. This is what I used to study um, before an exam. And then it also has page bursts, which I also have on my iPad. And this is how I read the textbook when I'm away from my actual textbook, like anywhere where I have Wi-Fi. So if I'm at work and I have a little bit of time, I'll bring this so that I can read the textbook. But I go into the book um, section, and then I go to resources, student resources, then I go to the chapter that I need and I'm doing chapter 16 and then it pops up here, it has questions, key points, pretests, rationales for the uh, questions in there, concept map and glossary and I get the key points. So here you guys can actually see it's like the starting of my um, exam to chapter for, uh, I mean a uh, cancer chapter. But so here are the key points. And what I will do is I will actually copy and paste things that I possibly missed while reading the um, exam or things I just don't feel like typing up, honestly. And I'll just copy and paste it into my actual exam guide. And this helps a lot. But do not use this as the end-all be-all. You need to take your own notes. You need to read the chapter. And when you go through and you do like your med search success book or um, the NCLEX comprehensive review test, anything that gives you a rationale if you didn't get that answer right, you need to write the rationale down into your exam study guide. And I'll actually show you what it looks like when I do that. Um, and it's pretty much like I write down anything that I've been tested on that I did not know. I write it down into the section that it was possibly covered in. So it help me remember. So I'm going to copy and paste some of these. 
and I'll show you guys what my chapter, exam 2 chapter looks like. So this is like just the start of it. See, it says chapter 16, Cancer. And I started taking some of the notes. Um, most of the time, I type whatever I highlighted because apparently, you know, it's important. So I type it up. And then I also look at my syllabus to see what they wanted us to focus on. For instance, they wanted us to focus on the development of cancer. Um, also, the staging of cancer, um, the grading of it as well. Uh, we had to know a few terms like carcinoma, neoplasm, the Nadir effect all that stuff and then it'll, I, they also ask us to you know focus on the nursing implementation I haven't gotten to that point yet but that's where I will start going on to next and then that little chart right there is just a chart on um, benign versus malignant cells so what are the key things you're looking for so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll bold and highlight things that well for one it's a chart so this should be bold and highlighted but anything that I think is important so Benign versus malignant, that's something that they will most likely ask a, que a question on. The classification of cancer, how they do the grading, definitely. Um, and stuff like that. Then also, what I will do is if I have a hard time understanding things, um, for instance, we just read Falut and Electrolyte, and it's not so much it's very difficult to understand, but there's a lot of stuff that you need to remember, especially with the um, osmolality, um, hydrostatic pressure, and all that stuff. I will actually go to YouTube and here is um, the Megan McClintock. I actually watch her videos on what to do before taking a nursing school exam. I think it's really important because um, I noticed some of my classmates got tripped up on one of the things that she covered on in her post, which is in fundamentals, when you see that the answer gives you assess, you always choose that because, you know, in fundamentals, that's the first thing you need to do is you assess. But that doesn't actually hold true for when you go into med surge. And we did have an, a question on our exam, and it said, I can't even remember what the question was exactly, but it gave you, like, one of the answers was assess, and then there was another question, and a lot of people chose it because they said, oh, well, in fundamentals, if it says assess, that's the first thing you do. Not necessarily a med surge. So I would say definitely watch her videos. And then she has a really good one on fluid and electrolyte um, basics. So I'm definitely watching that. I've actually watched it already and listened to it in my car. And then I'm going to go over and do... Um, take notes on it as well because I feel like with the fluid and electrolytes there's a lot of little pieces that I need to make sure I understand so that's pretty much what I do um if you guys can if you guys do use an Elsevier um textbook I would definitely recommend going online and um getting the access code or whatever you need to do and then to have it in your your evolve thing because it gives you a lot of information and it's really helpful and the questions are pretty good as well some of the questions um are the same things that they have in the book but anytime you can give yourself like something else to you know practice on is definitely a good idea so here's my exam one review um, packet that I made it was 28 pages um, and just covered everything that was pretty much on our syllabus and uh, things that I read but do you guys see here like I have malignant hypothermia um, and then underneath of it, I have like signs and symptoms of it, hypoxemia, hypercapnia, ventricular dysrhythmias, um, trying to guys find something. Okay, so here. So this is where I took tests on certain things and like these were things that I did not possibly read about or understand, so I take notes on it. So for instance, with spinal anesthesia, the patient should be able to move and feed I, sorry, move and feel sensations in all four extremities and indicates no nerve damage. So that's pretty much what they're saying there is that after somebody has a spinal anesthesia, this is something that you want to happen. You want to make sure that this patient can feel all four of their extremities to know that the anesthesia is worn off and there weren't any, there wasn't any nerve damage. Also, the patient needs to be um, placed in a supine position um, to limit the leakage of CSF fluid. That wasn't something that I remember reading in the textbook, but when I went through med surgic success and... Um, the, con the Saunders Comprehensive Review that was in there. So I wrote that down. Here I have, oh, this one was a good one too. This was actually one of our exam questions. Um, so the complications after surgery, I should say. Pneumonia and atelectasis, hemorrhage, shock, thrombophlebitis, urinary retention, constipation. So I wrote down um, the things that you'll see. So in pneumonia and atelectasis, um, dyspnea. So the person will have trouble breathing. Uh, the respiratory rate will be increased. 
uh, you'll feel crackles in the lungs, um, elevated temperature, and a productive cough and chest pain. So interventions, sorry, my handwriting's not the neatest, is um, assess the lung and breath sounds, reposition every half hour to make sure that you know, you're moving that fluid around. Also encourage deep breathing um, and coughing, and then increase fluid intake as well, and early ambulation, that helps. And then one thing I definitely remember that was important and was on our exam was what was the difference between a fat embolism and a pulmonary embolism. And if you didn't really review the um, pretty much the differences between the two, you would have actually got that question wrong. Um, where is it? Here we go. So, okay. Um, so the main difference between a fat embolism and a pulmonary embolism the main thing that stuck out to me was actually the timing in which it happened. So a fat embolism can happen um, 24 to 48 after, 48 hours after the injury, whereas a pulmonary embolism typically happens five days after the injury. And this is one of the questions, and um, you know they can be pretty similar. You're gonna have like the same kind of symptoms as like dyspnea, chest pain. Um, one other difference is with a fat embolism, they typically have a petechial hemorrhage, especially around the chest and neck area. That's one thing um, pulmonary embolism also doesn't have. But a lot of the other things, signs and symptoms are the same, such as increased um, temperature, pulse, and respiration rate, decreased uh, SAO2, hypotension, dizziness. So you want to look for those key differences between the two and then really remember that because that can be you know, the difference between getting a question right and getting a question wrong. So then also what I do is after I take an exam is I go and I highlight anything that was on the exam that was in my um, my exam review. So I highlight it to remember things that they focused on so that I know that, you know, when the final exam comes, probably review that material over just one more time just to make sure. Here, you guys can see this is my acid base imbalance the respiratory acidosis alkalosis i just made a little chart and these are things that i did to try, kind of help me um remember certain things and um i find that charts seem to be easier for me if i put everything onto like a packet that i have with me i can take this with me to work i can take it with me when i'm waiting to do something and i will always have a chance to actually go and review it so hope this helps guys bye